Hi, this is Megha Joshi, the host of the Boardroom Zen podcast. This show is created for the ambitious business leaders. Are you someone wanting to play big? Want to possess a strong brand and executive presence that makes you belong in every room you walk into? In all of this without putting your personal life on hold? If the answer to those questions is yes, then you are in the right place. In this show, I sit down with best in class leaders to distill their wisdom while sharing what helped me stand out as a Fortune 100 executive. So let's get started. Our guest today is a finance transformation executive from one of the largest nonprofit healthcare systems in the country. Prior to this role, she led operations as a senior VP for a global BPO, where she worked in Mexico, Costa Rica, and the Philippines. What truly sets her apart is her infectious energy, passion for building strong teams and leading them through transformation. On a personal level, she's all about fitness, travel, and her four babies. Please join me in welcoming none other than Heather Joel to the show. Heather, welcome. Thank you. It's so Thank great you. to I'm happy to be here. It's so great to have you here, Heather. Long time in the making. And I remember we both were introduced through a common friend that we both adore, Sean Ilenre. And ever since I've gotten to learn more about you, I have just been so intrigued and in just hearing your personal stories and trajectories, the one word that pops in my head is bold. That's how I I look at you, Heather. And I'm just inquisitive to get your take on your life. And just wanted to ask you if you really had to sum yourself up in one word, what would that be? I think I would say the one word that comes to mind is spirited. Spirited because it's energy and it's enthusiasm, but it's determination too. Right? Mm -hmm. Because undirected energy really doesn't get you anywhere. You spin in a circle. But when you have, when you're spirited about something, uh, it becomes fun. Mm -hmm and focused and, and and that kind of infectious energy emanates and i always feel like that for me that's how i can show up mm-hmm. and inspire people and also i want to have fun when i'm working too so yeah. I, I would say spirited is a, uh, is a fair word to use. <laughs> i love it i love it and you you're so right undirected energy is really no good in fact it can do more harm than good right and so That's right. From my conversations with you, you've been so focused, but at the same time, you seem to have been in touch with your own intuition. And I'm just very curious to learn more about your trajectory. And especially when you look back at yourself, I'm sure there have been key decisions or experiences that you call defining moments for you, where you leaned into your gut and went down a certain path and it paid great dividends. So I'm just curious to see if there's anything you want to share with us today. So when I think about like defining moments in my life, like the moments that really have mattered and that have brought me right here today, I would go back to 2012. I was working, I was living in Corpus Christi, Texas and running an operation there. I was in BPO Mm -hmm. back then. And I got a call from our COO and he said, I have a question for you. And I mean, look, I'm supposed to have answers. That's my job, right? (laughs) As a leader, they think we know the answers to everything. I'm like, okay, well, I'm ready with whatever it is. And he said, we're restructuring. And he said, you're the first domino that needs to fall for the rest of this to happen. But I was wondering if you would move to Mexico. (laughs) And to give you a little background on that, I didn't have a passport then. (laughs) I figured there was, I didn't have a passport. And I, and now that some time has passed and, and Aaron, my COO then, and I have talked about this in depth, he said, I kind of thought, well, I'll give her some time to think about it and we'll revisit. He had a pros and cons and I sat there and I thought, sure, I'll do it. I said, I'll need a passport, but I'll go. (laughs) And it was utter silence on the phone and I could feel utter silence within me. Like I could feel like, what did I, I just said yes to this. And I'll tell you what, he said, yes. He said, okay, well, we got to start planning. And then the, the logistics, kind of the boring stuff of getting ready to move happened. But I sold everything I own. I got in my car with the cat and drove to Mexico. And 
live there. And I mean, listen, I speak Spanish, uh, not nearly as well as I should, but just to drive into another country when before I'd never even traveled to another country, that changed everything for me. Not just now international business operations is very different because you have the cultural aspects, you have different business law, right? Tax, the things that we take for granted in American business, when we're doing a transformation or we're showing up with a new product or a new line, it shows up differently in other places, but it's just humbling as a human to go live somewhere else. And I immerse, right? So I was like, well, go to the gym and the grocery store and all the other places everyone else goes. And I'm going to just do whatever they're doing and figure out how that feels on me. Mm -hmm. And from there, talk about time in the Philippines. I mean, I was over there living. I lived in Costa Rica. I can't imagine what would have happened if I didn't have that piece of me that's inside of me that's like, you can do this. So of all of the decisions I've made, a lot of folks will focus on like, oh, well, I, I made this mistake and then this happened because of it. And I learned this great lesson. I learned a great lesson because the organization, the team, and the people that work for me in these other countries, which are now my family, like right. we all did something together. And I think there's a lot of beauty in that. And I'm different now because of it. And I can show up differently in a meeting because I've been the one that didn't understand what was happening. Right. And so that humbling of my own knowledge and then the embracing of something new and different made me, period. And so let me unpack this, right? Because this is so intriguing. The entire life you had built here in the States over those past decades, in a split second, you made the decision and you were comfortable with going to a whole new country when you didn't even have a passport. How did you deal with that fear? Because I'm sure you felt some inklings of it inside you. So I really, I was scared, especially when when I was getting ready, typically when we're preparing for something, we're not thinking about what happens when it happens, right? And so I was in preparation mode. So it was everything from even like the passport getting, I need us to get my stuff out of storage that I never even moved in to begin with. But then here I am crossing the border and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, it's kilometers. And the fear set in <laughs> because traffic patterns were different. And the one thing that I know innate is that, and I think that's just from growing up in a really large family, being from a very small town, is I knew that there was this whole big world out there. And the only way to tap into it is to tap into it and to get unsteady. And by getting unsteady and putting myself out there, I've time and again proven that my determination to experience as much as I can has championed me. And I, I believe in myself. I mean, I trust that the path I'm on is where I'm supposed to be. And I make mistakes probably more often than I make the right decisions, but I embrace those things and I keep pushing forward. And I think the differentiator there is, and you use the word immerse, right? You were open to new experiences. You immersed yourself in the new cultures and the ways of being. And fast forward to now, look at you, Heather, you're, you're a jet setter. Every time we connect, you're probably in a different part of the world or the country. And it's been, seems like it's been an incredibly fulfilling journey for you. And you should be so proud of yourself. Thank you. Yes. This year I've logged 94,000 miles, <laughs> airline miles this year already. So, and I'm so happy to be here. I always say of all the places I've ever been, the greatest place I've ever slept is at home. So. <laughs> that is a true statement for most of us. I concur. And so Heather is with your lifestyle. Clearly you're on the road so much and with really hectic and you know, stressful lifestyles comes this challenge of trying to keep up with it and trying to maintain ourselves in good operating state, whether it's mentally or physically or emotionally. And so I'm just curious to learn more, Heather, what coping practices may you have that keep you going because you look wonderful and I know you're also a fitness maniac. So one first thing I would say is be kind to yourself and have some grace. That's so important because I always go well intended on any travel. I'm going to do my three workouts here and I'm going to get the, and it never works that way. But there's a part that probably most people don't know about me that have met me and called the past five years. I've lost 208 pounds now. Oh my God. So guess what? I've been on the other side of this and 
I had to start from so, so far back. And I just truly believe that if I just showed up every single day and I've deployed, number one, get your sleep. I don't care. And I just hung up from a call prior to this. And I said, I don't care what you eat today, your vitamins. If you go on a walk, you have to sleep because sleep is the core or the foundation yeah. of how well you do everything else, right? Yeah. And your insulin. And I mean, I've read about it and read about it. And I think I, I keep myself educated on fitness because I don't want to sign up for all the gimmicks. It's really just workouts, food, vitamins, water, sleep, and grace. Have so much grace. Forgive yourself for whatever it is you didn't do right. Because the beautiful thing I think about life and just a journey is that there's more than one path to get there. Mm -hmm. And so a piece of cake might look good today and that's all right. But maybe tomorrow you'll choose a bowl of fruit. So I am indeed a fitness fanatic. I love it. And, but I'm very proud of the work that I've done and I want to stay on this path. I'm actively right now working on muscle gain. Wow. I'm going to gain five pounds. I can't believe I'm <laughs> saying that out loud, but I want to gain five pounds and build muscle and get there. So that's a great question. I, I love your spirit. Heather, and thank you for sharing such great strategies out there. I can't agree more with you on how big a role sleep plays in our state of well-being, and especially when we are young. Um, I used to take pride in barely sleeping a couple of hours and still being functional. But what I didn't realize is we build this debt in our body, the sleep debt in our body over the years that then adds up, right? And so you have to make up for it. And there's no uh, shortcut when it comes to taking care of yourself, your you know, mental, physical, emotional well-being. And I particularly loved your comment about giving yourself grace and being kind to yourself. And that's something we often forget because we're chasing this next moving target and we just keep pushing ourselves too hard and along the way we're harsh to ourselves and as a result we're not happy and we're not enjoying the experience of attaining that goal while that should have been an exciting part of our life experience we turned into a struggle right and so grace and just really enjoying the ride i think are pivotal to our well-being all in all. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so Heather, great conversation here. I know we touched on so many different aspects, right? And we're getting close towards the end of the our conversation. And I'm just curious to hear your perspective or any takeaways or lessons you may have for our listeners, uh, because the listeners we have here on this show, they are the ones that are really shooting for the stars, if you will. They have lofty career goals and they want to be in positions like yourself. And so as you talk to someone with that archetype, what piece of advice would you give them? So I think I said it earlier, say yes, because art of the possible never can happen if you stay inside your box. I desire comfort too. We all do. And I desire stability. Yep. I want stability, but I find my greatest moments have come when there has been a decision point and I've said yes, because I trusted myself enough that if it didn't work, I could pull out of that. If I decided I, let's say I went to Mexico and I didn't like it, I did not like it. Well, I can just come back. And I know that sounds, that's a really simple, it would take way more than that just to come back, but no more than it took to go. And I would know something more about myself. And so I think saying yes, and that lends to trusting your heart, trusting your instincts in any situation. I know the rooms I shouldn't be in and I leave those rooms. They're not for me. Right. And so I have no issue and I will tell you, and this has been over time. So I don't care if you're a senior leader or if you're in the, the middle part of your career, it's okay to say, you know what? Thank you. I really appreciate this, but I'm going to go ahead and step away and go focus your time somewhere where you can make an impact because we talk about all these moments in life and defining moments and moments where we learn. But the truth is there's a finite number of moments we have. So what are you going to do to make sure that you have an impact in your own life? And that's what matters. And I love, love, love looking back and saying, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that. Like yeah. that was crazy. Yeah. 
but it was awesome. And, and then I can share those stories. And I always think by sharing those stories with others and telling them kind of even the process of just because I said yes doesn't mean I wasn't scared. Right. Just because I said yes doesn't mean it was a huge victory. But there's never been a time where I haven't got on board with something and been like, wow, I'm glad I tried or I'm glad I succeeded. So that would be, that's powerful. And trust a farm girl from Wisconsin who never left the country <laughs> until 2012. The world can change like that. And what great takeaways there, Heather, and what an inspiring journey you've had, by the way. Hats off to you. And I love how you said it, that we only have a finite number of moments in this lifetime, right? So we might as well take our bets in whether we succeed or even if we don't, we're still growing and expanding from that life experience, right? So making those moves is essential because we might as well take them and grow from them, right? As you said, and you're a living and breathing example of making those big moves and saying, hey, what's the worst that could happen? I'll figure it out, right? I'll pivot from right. here. And that's the beauty of it. Having said that, I will admit that being in that mindset requires a very high degree of self-confidence and awareness, right? Because not everybody would have so much confidence in themselves. So I just want to give you due credit for the bold moves you've made and for all the amazing things you've shared on this podcast. Well, thank you. And for, I think too, for those folks that let's say that the boldness or the, the big yes, you're not ready for for it. There's lots of opportunities in every single day to say yes to smaller things, even if it's how oh, I'm going to drink the water instead of yeah. the soda, yeah. or you can build that muscle. Mm -hmm. And because confidence, I didn't just wake up confident. I built that muscle over time. And so if you're saying I could never do that one, that's untrue, that, that, that is untrue language. And you should not talk to yourself that way. And two, explore why you think that and then make a different decision. I love it. It is a muscle that we all can constantly hone and not everybody has to pack their bags and move overseas, but even small moves can be mighty, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I love it. Great conversation, Heather. I just want to say how wonderful it's been having you on the show and long time in the making. And thank you so much again for making time despite your crazy travels and schedule. Thank you too. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. There is no better time than now to stop playing small and tap into your zone of genius. With a Boardroom Zen executive coach by your side, experience the game-changing transformation, both internally and externally. Find out more on BoardroomZen.com. And thank you for listening to my show. It means so much to me. I'd love for you to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite listening platform. More power to you and hope to see you soon.